Indiana University East School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, Bond Polarity and Electronegativity. So, so far we've talked about covalent bonds where electron density is hypothetically equally shared. So that's a covalent bond. A pure covalent bond would be like this. And we've talked about ionic bonding where electron is transferred completely from one atom to another in the case of a binary ionic compound. So that's our ionic bond. So here we have equal sharing and here we have a complete transfer of the electron density. What happens in HF? Well fluorine can hold on to the electron density a lot better than a hydrogen so there's an uneven sharing of electron density. Here the fluorine holds a lot more of the electron density there's an excess electron density and this leads to a partial negative charge on the fluorine whereas on the hydrogen there is um, some loss of electron density compared to the neutral atom and so it has a partial positive charge this has lost some of that electron density there's some transfer of electron density from the hydrogen to the fluorine and we call this a polar covalent bond where the electron density is shared unevenly between the two atoms concerned and since we have this we have a partial positive end and a partial negative end and we have a dipole moment which is drawn from the positive end to the negative end. How do we figure out if there's if it's um, polar or nonpolar? And what's the difference between a polar covalent bond where there is sharing but uneven sharing and versus an ionic bond where there's complete transfer of the electron density. The way to figure this out typically is to use the electronegativity scale which is a measure of the relative attraction for electron density in a covalent bond. There are a number of different scales that are used but here we are going to use the Pauling scale. And really it's just how well it holds on an electron density. And in Pauling scale, you go from 0 to 4. So fluorine has the maximum electronegativity. One thing I will state is that I will not be providing you with the numbers themselves. But you don't really need to memorize them either. The overall trend across the periodic table is that as you go from left to right, as you go from from bottom to top, the electronegativity increases. Hydrogen fits in somewhere between the metal, non-metal boundary. And you will just have to see how far apart they are to see whether they're polar or nonpolar. You should be aware that F is the most 
electronegative and then CL N and O are more electronegative than most other things and you can see whether it's just one spot left or right in which case it's probably nonpolar or is it further apart in which case it's probably polar you should be aware that H and carbon will lead to non-polar covalent bonds. So depending on the difference in electronegativity you would see a difference in polarity. So as you can see here as the difference in electron increases the polarity of the bond increases and this is a gradual scale but as a general rule of thumb if the difference in electron negativity is less than 0 0.4 less than or equal to 0 0.4 it is nonpolar and if it's between 0 0.5 to 2.0 it is polar covalent as it gets bigger than 2 it is an ionic bond but even here you have to be a bit careful the percent ionic character which is really a measure of polarity Okay, you can see that in diatomic molecules that as in general as the difference in electronegativity increases the ionic character increases. You should also be aware that no compound has a 100% ionic character we just need to be able to realize if something is ionic enough to be considered ionic versus whether it is polar covalent.